Welcome back, Nada fans. We're back with the Losers Finals 1 between Daniil Kalina and Pau. Pau did a really good job against Draven last time. Supreme Lake, nice use of, well, economy, really. That was the thing that won it for him. Because the economy just allowed him to pump enough units out. Draven did get an early advantage on C, but ultimately it did not pan out, so... Didn't get any constructors, I don't think, actually, come to think of it. I think I got hovercraft constructors near the end, but nothing early on. Anyway, we're going to have Daniil Kalina and Pau once the players agree to actually start the game. Daniil Kalina seems a little bit away right now. And then once that is done and started, we can actually get to that. And, yeah, pointing out last game, Draven actually never did excess. Pau nearly excessed. He didn't excess, but he wasn't spending up metal that quickly, so it wasn't... He wasn't stalling on metal either. I think Pepe was a bit confused. He didn't know which player was which when I was selecting them, and that's why I prefer to have the advanced, the deluxe player list. But that doesn't seem to work with Nada. So, yeah, unfortunate. Anyway, we are going to start the game up as soon as the players get in. And isn't this a familiar face? We're going to be on Titan Duel. Seen this map in a while. Yeah, Titan Duel is a map that I'm sure anyone who's been watching any of my Zero K casts has seen, because it is a map that comes up a lot in Zero K. I did not expect it to come up here, though, but hey, I'm glad to see it. It's a good map. Very vehicle-focused. I expect both players are going to go for vehicles. Not a lot of hills, mind you. We have seen a lot of the Nautic games been played on hilly maps. This map is very flat. There are some hills, but not very many. Anyway, both players are starting. We have the Northwest, Neil Kalina, in red and... In pink, we have Pow. Or purple. Magenta. Magenta, that's what it is. In the southeast corner, what is he going for? He is just going for metal extractors. Nothing major. This is definitely a little bit weird to look at, though, because, well, I'm used to it being the same idea. I'm used to zero K. This is going to be weird. But anyway, that aside, Daniel Kalina is. He's getting pretty standard stuff opening metal extractors and power plants. And Pow is also going for opening metal extractors and power plants. Nothing too major, nothing too different. Let's see, what else is going on here? I think that we're just going to have to wait a little bit because both players are building up the factory. Oh, K-Bot Factory coming up for Daniela Kalina very soon. And, oh yeah, I should probably point out, when I say vehicle map, I am, of course, thinking of 0K because... In this, in 0K, this is a vehicle tank map. I'm sure all of you know, but... In Nauta, vehicles are so expensive that most people will go for K-Bots regardless. And not much faster than K-Bots, so people just go for K-Bots regardless. Now, let's see if a map like this with so much open space when it comes to approaching your opponent's base is going to afford more scouting. If the player is going to go for scouting, see what the opponents are up to. However, it looks like they're each going to make it pretty easy for their opponents. Their factories are very close to the front. Not a surprise there. You want to get as close as possible, obviously. Vehicles coming up for POW, by the way. But anyway, Daniil Kalina is going for some early scouts. He's going for a very quick couple fleas. And he should be sending those in. Like, send them in to die. That's what fleas are for. They go in, they figure what's going on, they might harass something, they die. Both players are playing arm, by the way. I should probably point that out. Anyway, fleas are coming in, and they are they are being used. Going from the north, coming from the west. Like I said, the structure of this map means that scouting around is probably going to be easier than it was on either Supreme Lake or Supreme Small Battlefield, or Small Supreme Battlefield, because both of those games were on maps that basically had one approach vector, except for water. And the Flea will see that vehicles are coming up first, with Flash is coming up to try to stop it. The Flea is able to avoid that, though. Nicely done. That Flea is actually completely undamaged. If it's not careful, though, it will die, and it... I mean, the thing is, he does know what's going on. Let's see what... What is Daniil Kalina's point of view? Okay, he knows what's going on. He knows the vehicle factory. He knows about all these power plants. Does he know about this here? And that flea is going down. But a flea has seen the factory, and that's what matters. He knows where the factory is. And you can probably guess where the tower is. I mean, the start boxes weren't that big in this case, so it's not a big deal. But he knows where the factory is. That's important. If he wants to destroy that factory anytime, he can. Well, okay, once he gets the units for it, obviously. Now just going mostly for peewees and some Rockos. Rocco's being the best idea. He needs to know about the vehicles because he needs to go for Rocco's to basically counter them. Of course, if levelers come... No, levelers won't come up. Levelers are a core unit. 
Panthers, however, might still be a problem. I think Panthers would, be f would work. But I think Rockos will win. I think Rockos win out in that case. I hope someone in chat can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But I'm pretty sure Rockos will work finding his Panthers. And Flash is just coming up, trying to make sure that they have some flank going on. I think that Pow is going to... He might try to scout, but the Flashes are not anywhere near as expendable as Fleas are. However, this Flash here is going to have... Nice. Free shot on this Metal Extractor. He doesn't know where the factory necessarily is, but he can probably infer when he finds the Metal Extractor is pretty empty. Let's double check Radar for a sec. Pow has... Okay, never mind. Pow has full Radar coverage. It's hard to tell because everything is yellow, except for this little corner right here. Pow knows exactly everything about... Or not exactly everything. He knows where everything is inside Daniil's base. Daniil knows nothing. He does have a radar coming up his own, though. And once that's done, it'll go from this rather nice, warm, cozy shade of purple into a much more aggressive shade of yellow of a radar, seeing everything except for these back mexes. So now both players are playing with their hands laid flat in the table. They each know exactly where the others are for positioning. And now I can see kind of why a map like Titan Duel was not likely to be played because, well... Oh, yeah, actually, Draven pointing out that Panthers do have Radar Stealth. So they are the best option. That's something I probably should have pointed out earlier, why Pow would be going for that, but definitely something to point out now. Pow is going for Panthers because Panthers cannot be seen. <laughs> Despite the fact that both players know what each other is doing, Panthers kind of stop that. I'm a bit surprised that no Radar Jammers are coming up for... Are there? No. No, there aren't. Nope. Daniel not going for Radar Jammers at all. In fact, does he have any? No, I don't think Arm actually has that. Okay, never mind. Now, where are those Panthers? They are going to the south. As are some construction bots, but... One of the construction bots is getting harassed a bit. So, Daniil knows that this is here. I mean, okay, obviously he knows that this is here. He knows everything that's going on. Pow does have basically the same economy as Daniil. He has a slightly better energy economy, but about even metal economy at this point. Oh, Draven pointing out Tier 2. That's where Radar Jammer comes in which isn't likely to happen for another 15 minutes or so. I guess we're not going to see that, though. So we're going to see a lot of Panthers and not much else. Maybe, I think Infiltrators might be Radar Stealth. If so, then that could be a good way of getting through this. Anyway, the Panthers, a bit of a surprise for Daniil there, but even then, actually, he has a lot of forces coming in here. The Peewees, even with that, the Panthers are showing their back armor, which isn't the best thing to do. However, now showing their side armor, which is good, Wants to circle around. That seems to be the micro you want to do in Nada. You want to circle around. You don't want to. S you don't want to retreat and try to fire while retreating. You sort of can, but it's not easy. And a Kbot Lab is coming up for Pow as well. Just to make sure he can. He has enough metal to do it too. But he wants to make sure. I imagine that he's able to fight toe to toe with the numbers. I mean, he has the strength individually, but the Rockos are doing a number on his vehicles, and I don't know if there is a counter for Rockos in the vehicle lab for Arm. For Core, there is. The Leveler is, but not sure about Arm. And Peewee getting rid of this Metal Extractor expansion is going to be rather tough for Pow, and I think Daniil is actually getting... He's getting ahead. Slightly ahead, but he's still getting ahead. He's getting territory control, that's for sure. That's the important thing. Pow trying to re-control the territory. He's trying to get more hammers just to get rid of all these forces, out-artillery them, and then push in with the Panthers. Using the Panthers to try to deter any attacks into his main base. He wants to make sure that he doesn't actually get hit while doing his factory... Well, not switch, but his second factory here. No second factory yet for Daniil, though. Interesting. He, does have, he has the metal for it, but he's not going for it quite yet. He's just building up. Focusing his metal on expansion instead. And more Panthers coming up alongside the Hammers... I'm not sure if he wants to just get rid of the Panther construction right now completely. Just go pure hammer. Like, he doesn't have the money to support both factories efficiently. Anyway, the Panthers are going north. That does leave this area open, and Daniil has taken advantage of this. The hammers are coming in, and the Panthers are trying to... They're flanking pretty well to deal with the Peewees here, but... Still... Daniil did have an opening to push in a bit. Not the best opening. Didn't quite bite him in... Didn't quite bite power in the ass quite yet, but it came close. Came very, very close. However, now it's going to be a problem. Now this is going to be an issue. Radar down for Pow. Pow is in the dark. 
Remember, radar sees the entire map. If you have a radar, you know exactly what your opponent's up to, and Pow does not. I think Daniil's gonna take this game from here. I mean, the Panthers are doing a nice job, but I think that the factory start was just the advantage here. I think the vehicle factory, as I mentioned before, vehicles aren't that much slower than bots, or sorry, that much faster than bots, but bots are considerably more numerous. I'd say vehicles in this, fact, in this map, decent second factory once you have an established position with a lot of metal, but not a good first factory. However, second factory for Daniil is gonna be air, and Pow building up another laser tower, trying to just consolidate a bit. Consolidating into a losing position, yes, but still at least not completely dying. Regardless, the map belongs to Daniil. Wait, was that? Was that a GG? That might have been. I mean, it, it might as well be, because at this point, it is game. And yep, that is game. Daniil self-destructs everything and... Sorry, Pow self-destructs everything, not Daniil. Daniil suddenly self-destructs everything, deciding to throw the towel and give Pow the match. No, Pow loses. Pow has been eliminated. It was a valiant effort, but he did lose ultimately, so Daniil will be fighting against Pepe Ampere. And then the winner of that will fight against Goda, and we will have that shortly, so stay tuned.